Let's see, Rob Rennie from EternalPlanner.com uh, was gracious enough to interview me and get my, my testimony about how I came out of the occult and got saved by, by Christ and became a Christian. And it's been, um, it's been about a year and three months since we did that interview. And I watch it all the time. Um, because I, like I watched it today for like the thousandth time and I, I still cry when I watch it because, um, because it was, it was so powerful for me actually meeting God personally, you know, a, a year and nine months after I got saved and, and I still feel the same way. I, I, I still want to tell people about it. Um, and groovy enough, people still want to know because I was, after I watched um, the interview again today, I was going through uh, the comments and stuff and reading some of them and, you know, of course there's like stupid and, and mean and snarky comments, but honestly, for the most part, through posting that testimony, I've met some of the coolest and just most encouraging people that I'll probably never get a chance to meet face to face, you know, but um, to those people who have emailed me and messaged me and, and left a, a, an encouraging comment, I just want to say thank you. To, like, thank you. It, it's helped me so much. Because um, honestly, like when I got saved and, and I did that, that interview, I didn't I didn't know really what I was getting into. Um, and Rob had even asked me towards the end of the interview, he was like, well, have you gone through any, um, I guess like, uh, I guess kind of like backlashing from Satan or whatever for, you know, coming out of the occult and posting that testimony and whatnot. Um, and at the time I really, there was stuff going on, but it got worse. <laughs> After I posted that testimony and, and said what I, you know, said about Freemasonry and Catholicism and all that other stuff, like Satan just pretty much announced that he hates my guts. <laughs> but God's got me through it, so it's okay. Um, but I just kind of want to go back uh, and review some things and answer some questions that people had because um, they were just things that I didn't really think about at the time of that interview. Honestly, the Holy Spirit took over that interview because I had had something happen that morning um, with my son. I had actually caught his daycare lady abusing him that morning and I was not in a good frame of mind that day. I had I'd been crying really hard all day that day um and i just i couldn't even think straight so before the interview i was singing to god really loud and pissing my neighbors off and um and i was on my face in my kitchen and i was just crying out to god i was i was hurt i was confused but then at the same time i felt determined because i knew that Satan was trying to stop that interview from happening and now I see why because you know five six thousand people have seen it and I've received hundreds of, of personal messages and, and made really good friends you know that have been delivered from certain things just by me telling the truth about my testimony and, and my life and my past and you know, and you have the power to do that too. That's what a testimony is. Whatever that God has brought you through and that you've overcome, you have the power to deliver other people from that problem. But, um, okay, so I wanted to, I saw this specific comment that I thought was really groovy. Hold on. Let me get my face off the screen. Uh, Okay, so first one, Elizabeth Andrew. Thank you, Chick, sister, for watching this. And she said, I'm sending this out on my email list. I have to say the beginning opening with the pyramid and the warning may make lost people turn off the testimony before it gets started. I know what he's saying, but to a lost person, it sounds fanatical or outlandish. 
We want to reach people, not turn them off before they even get the message. I feel you on that, but at the same time, Elizabeth, like, anytime a person's telling the truth, it doesn't matter what way they tell people. If people aren't ready for it, they're not going to hear it anyways. I didn't have ears to hear until I finally, um, and this kind of ties into your next question that you left on the comments. Um, you said, I wish she had talked about how she came out and turned to Jesus or what made her realize she had stopped talking to spirit guides. Okay, I want to clarify this. I was not a believer in Jesus Christ as who he says he was or the Bible until that moment that God told me to rise in Christ. I had no idea up until that point that Jesus was real. And honestly, there would have been nothing in this world that would have convinced me that Jesus was real because I was so adamant on not believing in it. I'm, I was very opposed to religion. I still am. I'm all about Jesus now, but I don't like religion and denominations for the simple fact that they kept me away from knowing the truth for a long time. Um, so clarify that I didn't I didn't turn to Jesus Jesus turned to me and I have no idea why <laughs> like I said in the interview I didn't I didn't deserve it but for whatever reason um you know God pulled me out of out of that spiritual hell I was in now what made me surrender to God that day in the shower when I got saved was a couple of things um like a month or two before i got saved uh the the psychic medium uh her name's sylvia brown she actually passed away but i had done a, a phone interview with her um i write for a local magazine or whatever and i saw that she was coming to town so i called up her manager which was her husband and I got a, a phone interview with her. Unfortunately, I don't know why, but the, the interview didn't record on my um, little audio recording contraption. So I don't have a, I don't have a copy of the interview, but I'm kind of glad in a way that I don't because the things that I remember her telling me, she was very, very well-rounded, very intelligent woman. Um, but I remember her telling me that the word um, sins or whatever in the Bible was mistranslated and she had a reason for it that sounded very logical and um, you know she made me feel really I guess kind of comforted for being a psychic she had offered to kind of mentor me if I needed her um, I guess her spirit guides or whoever, whatever demon she was working with, you know, told her that I had the gift. And so she was real open to, to helping me if I needed it. Um, she was a really neat lady. Um, so, okay, leading up to me getting saved, I was heavy, heavy into the psychic stuff. Um, I had actually started doing my own little, I got my own little office or whatever, and I was starting to do like tarot card readings, because I previously mixed um, my psychic stuff in with the, my massage therapy practice, um, and then I just got tired of doing massage therapy, because it's just exhausting at times, and mixed in with energy therapy and stuff, I was just drained and, and unhappy most of the time. Um, so, okay, psychic office, Sylvie Brown, oh, I was in a really bad relationship um, with a narcissist, and everybody has narcissistic tendencies, but if you don't know what a true narcissist is, um, go look it up, they're very harmful people, um, they will if you don't know any better and you can't spot them, you know, they, they'll damage, they'll damage your self-image, your self-esteem, your self-worth. And I had been with this guy for like two, maybe going on three years, probably closer to two. And we'd had a, um, 
a son together. So, I mean, honestly, what led me to drop it in my face that day, I was so, I was tired. I was tired of being tired, you know. I couldn't find any kind of peace in my life. You know, I didn't realize it at the time, but I was possessed. I had demons in me, you know, and they just made it. I mean, it was almost like I was kind of bipolar in a sense. I couldn't control my emotions. And then anytime I would feel content or happy or motivated, you know, the narcissist would see that and they would come in and the spirits working behind that would come in and, and they would cut me down again. You know, so it was, con it was just a constant beating me down. Um... And I know that it's the spirits. I don't. I, I forgive people for whatever they do. You know, as a Christian, we have to. And through this past year, nine months, I, I've I've learned forgiveness. Um. Because I've had some people just straight up stab me in the back and betray me. Um, Satan's works really hard to, to test. I don't know if he's testing my faith or if he's trying to get me to just abandon God altogether. But honestly through Satan's um, crap that he's trying to pull against me, it's only actually made me understand God's word and, and God's ways a little better. It's only brought me closer to God, so, <laughs> you know, um, it's been painful, but it's, it's a different kind of pain when you have the Holy Spirit because you have God sustaining you constantly. He's not going to let you fall. You know, before I had God, I fell to my face. Because I couldn't handle life anymore. And I, I was ready to kill myself that day. I'd been suicidal probably most of my adolescence up until that point. Um, I had actually, let's see, August of 20, 2007. August 2007. Um, a guy that I really, really loved. And... I believe at the time I would have been happy marrying him. Uh, um, he shot himself in the head. That's what that tattoo right there is. But I don't know if you can see it. But anyways. He shot himself in the head. And it was really hard for me. And I never really was like. Um. I was never really right in the head after that, um, but by God's goodness, you know, I, I moved forward in life, and, but eventually, you know, you go through so many hardships, and you're eventually kind of programmed and trained just to get knocked down and get back up get knocked down and get back up and in a way it's you know in a way it's it's got its pros and cons because it you know it builds strength within you but at the same time it kind of numbs you emotionally and when I fell to my face in, in the shower that day the previous like couple months mainly the previous like three weeks the Holy Spirit was really working on me um Honestly, I don't know what made me put down the tarot cards and the the occult stuff that I did. Because I did tarot cards, um, angel numbers, astrology, channeling, like channel writings. Um, I could pick up on people's energy. Like, it would just turn on. It was a daily thing for me. And honestly, one day, I just, I didn't touch it. Any of it. So it wasn't really me that that changed my mind about it. Um, it was it really was all God because I I had been in that stuff for like twelve years and I, you know, I was so lost like spiritually lost that I I couldn't have pulled myself out of that if I if I wanted to. You know, my solution was, hey God, I'm gonna kill myself or you're gonna reveal yourself to me because it it was that dire that day. Um, so I put down the occult stuff and I remember talking to a friend of mine and I was just, he was just letting me vent and I was talking about how much I hated this world and just how crappy this world is. 
this world was just for me it just wasn't tolerable without god because i'm so sensitive and empathetic you know spiritually and when i didn't have the protection of the holy spirit i mean i was just like thrown to the wolves in the spiritual realm and not only that i went seeking it out not knowing any better um this is kind of random but i remember one time i had done some like magic or rituals or whatever i had some sage and crystals and candles and stuff and i was sitting out in my backyard and my a good friend of mine of like 20 years she she was sitting there and then that narcissist guy that i was dating he was sitting there and we were all just talking well i burnt that sage and i'd noticed some like weird stuff going on but i couldn't really explain it but um so i had this big bundle of sage like it's probably like that big and i did a little prayer whatever to the other gods and i lit it and in all my time my practices doing massage therapy i would always spiritually cleanse my room with sage because i was big into shamanism and stuff and sage burns fairly slowly especially uh white sage especially a big bundle like that big and i did the prayer and i lit it and that sage literally was like and just burn up and i was like something's not right <laughs> and um so the narcissist was sitting there and i was watching him we were all just talking well my friend kept falling asleep i don't know if it's because she was on drugs or, or if it was spiritually influenced with her i honestly don't know but she kept falling asleep and then the narcissist in the middle of our conversation he starts this and his eyes roll in the back of his head and i'm sitting there looking at these two people asleep this aged burn up and i'm like what the hell <laughs> and i look over <clears throat> and in the spirit room i could see it like me looking at this computer right now like um, at the time, I didn't know what it was, but it was a Nephilim giant in the spirit realm. And his knee, like, we were sitting under this outdoor umbrella, and I couldn't even see, like, above his kneecap. He was so, it was so tall. It was ridiculous. <clears throat> so I saw that, and then I saw all these, like, demon shadow figures, like, crawling up the outside of the wall. And I was like, okay. And then it freaked me out, and I started, like, making a bunch of noise to wake them up and neither one of them remembered what happened so it was really weird um so yeah <clears throat> that's how i started learning about the nephilim there was a lot of like really intense spiritual stuff like that and um we went to the wakarusa festival in ozark arkansas and the first time i went in 2010 it was awesome so awesome and then when me and the narcissist went, it was like all hell broke loose. Like a tornado flew over us. Like we were in two feet of mud on the side of a mountain. He couldn't set up a tent. So like the tent's leaking. It, it was just, it was awful, dude. Like awful. And I remember on the way driving there, I was mocking this big sign that said Jesus is real and I was like yeah look at that sign blah and I took a picture of it well um <laughs> and then we got there and I saw that the the Walker Risa, like theme poster it was like this trippy 3d acid tripping picture of a Baphomet and I was like why would they have a I mean of all things like you know, Wakarusa was all about, like, New Age stuff. Love, hippiness, sharing, camping out, mushrooms, weed. You know, like, that kind of stuff. I was like, of all things, why pick a Baphomet that is obviously evil? I wasn't even a Christian at the time, and I knew that the Baphomet was, like, red flag. So that happened. Then we almost got killed by a tornado. <clears throat> and it was just an awful time that we had there. And I was like, man. And it was a letdown because the previous year that I went, Wakarusa and the whole experience, like, was the closest thing that I knew to God. Um, but unfortunately, it was, you know, other gods masking, you know, 
do with Satan ultimately. I mean, he, he really does come as an angel of light. You think it's all cool and hippie-ish and stuff, and then, you know, do a meditation or a mantra or, you know, take some drugs and sit in the middle of a gong circle and, you know, you open energetic um, your chakras and you let down your, you have like a, I mean, other than the Holy, like, before the Holy Spirit, you, everybody has, like, a, um, what's it called, the ethereal layer? It's kind of like an energetic layer of protection. And, um, like, when I did massage therapy, I did, like, uh, subtle body energy work. And we would open and close and balance chakras and balance energy and chi and all this other new agey eastern stuff. And, um, you know, when, when you're out there doing drugs and, and you're opening yourself spiritually to that stuff, you're actually open, even doing yoga. I know it sounds crazy, but it, it's true. Like, even doing yoga and stuff, um, especially kundalini yoga, you can open yourself up to demonic possession. True story. You gotta protect yourself. Um, and you gotta realize that you need God's protection. Because we're living in a world that's that's run by Satan, and um, most of the true Christians that that I've met since I I got saved, I haven't met one of them that's had an easy life. You know, a lot, most of us, most of God's people, you know, we we've had a lot of hardship, <laughs> spiritually, emotionally. You know, but there was. There was purpose for it. Like everything that I went through in order for God to pull me out of that, He predestined and purposed it for His glory because He already knew. He knew what was going to happen with this. You know, He He has created this army of us wounded healers and call us Christians. You know, but I mean, we're actually wounded healers that God is is building up. I mean, we're an army kind of feel sorry for Satan, to be honest with you, um, but we had to go through all that stuff, I had to go through all that stuff with the occult and whatnot in order to, to fulfill, you know, God's calling on my life, um, so the spirit guides and stuff, what made me realize that they were evil was that I wasn't progressing anywhere. I kept listening to the New Age teachings and stuff. And 12 years later, when nothing in my soul or my life had changed, actually had gotten worse. Um, I mean, it's like, you know, finally red flags started shooting up in my head. And, and I realized that, that all this love and light and manifest destiny and law of attraction and all this other crap they kept telling me that I was you know it always keeps you it gives you just enough higher knowledge that you'll just keep going back for it and keep and you'll keep believing it you know that's how Satan works he's an a-hole like, and just everything just came down at me at once I just felt everything at once and the Holy Spirit hit me and truth hit me and I literally fell to my face in the shower and I said God I'm sorry <laughs> I'm so sorry for my life um, in the previous three weeks I was I had been heavy heavy searching for truth like the Holy Spirit was really prompting me and plus I was trying to avoid the narcissist so I'd, I would just stay on my computer and research and just try to stay away from them um, but I researched you know conspiracy theories and then conspiracy theories <laughs> um, and like the new world order and stuff like that and then my my daughter, she was five years old at the time, uh, she had drawn this picture, two of them, on two different pieces of paper, and she brought it to me, and I kept them, because they looked like little scribblies, or whatever, like a five-year-old scribbles, but there was, there was two very distinct looking symbols on there, on both of them, so I, I just kind of put them aside and forgot about it, 
and then one night when I was doing the research, I ran across this video about like the um, the Mexico pyramids and the ancient Sumerians and that stuff was of interest to me because I had somehow channeled the god of the Anunnaki. Um, you can look those up, I guess. They're in the Bible. They're named as the Anakim, but at the time I didn't I didn't know it. it they just came to me and I just channeled one of them. So I kind of knew, kind of had interest in like the pyramids and the Mayans and the, um, so I started looking deeper into it because I'm watching this video and this video ends up connecting the dots for me in my head with the new world order and how the elite work now and how they've been doing the same thing since like the beginning of time. Um, and what really got me was um, I looked over and, and my daughter's drawings were sitting there and those same two symbols were on that video. <laughs> and it was uh, actually, let me see if I can show you. Um, her drawing was an aerial view of these pyramids and inside the pyramid where they used to sacrifice babies is the symbol that she drew. I'll find it. Yeah, and that was on there where they would slice a baby open. So they did that in like ancient times and then I was studying the New World Order and the Bohemian Grove and how some of the elite Illuminati would actually you know, sacrifice babies, and they place them on the altar and cut them open, and they sacrifice their warm blood. And uh, when I found that out, it really just twisted my my guts. Like, um, and so I started looking for the significance of sacrificing pure blood to you know their god or whatever and um i don't know i just started to have revelations of the truth about jesus and stuff because when i was a non-believer i was like why in the world would a loving god beat the hell out of his son and, and rip his flesh off and crucify him and sacrifice his innocent blood i didn't get it it's It just it has to be done. Like um, Satan's kingdom knows it. God already did it. But God, He did the one and only needed sacrifice, and He sacrificed Himself. That's what non-believers don't understand: that Jesus was actually the Creator God incarnated into flesh, and He sacrificed Himself for us. He wouldn't sacrifice babies and all this evil stuff god's not evil he created evil he created good and evil because everything has to have a balance in order for us to um have our free will you know um but anyways we're not gonna go there um so yeah i just it was just so much going on like within that the months and weeks of, of me getting saved and it just it the knowledge, the revelations, the emotional pain, the demonic stuff I was dealing with, the, you know, the, I mean, that doesn't even include the basic life stresses that you, that you go through every day, you know, with raising kids and stuff. Um, and all three of my kids have different dads, so the, no, my life wasn't really going that smoothly. <laughs> Um, so, basically, I mean, I know that wasn't really, like, a structured, organized, well-thought-out, um, answer, but it was the truth. I just, I had so much going on in so many levels that I almost, you know, it was either die to myself or, or actually die. It really came down to it, and, you know, God had mercy on me, and when I told him, I asked for forgiveness, you know, God didn't even hesitate to show me his love. You know, I didn't deserve it. 
I know I didn't, but he didn't hesitate. And he told me to rise in Christ. And I was like, Jesus was real. <laughs> but I was kind of coming to that conclusion because through all my studies, I would, another red flag got raised when I realized that the elitist in the world and Hollywood and all this other stuff, this worldly secular crap that we see, they're constantly mocking Jesus constantly and trying to discredit him and i started thinking and i'm like well if jesus in the bible wasn't real why in the world in 2013 it was at the time why in 2013 would would of all people elite satanists be worried about it you know so that kind of raised a red flag too i don't know so god just started connecting all these dots for me and just kind of put it all together in a way that i would you know, it would click with me, so, um, that's how I turned to Jesus, I didn't turn to Jesus, Jesus turned to me, I, I mean, this is not a, I think only believers with the Holy Spirit would actually understand this statement, because it's not out of arrogance, it's actually out of the Bible, you know, um, you know, God's ways are, are not our ways, and his thoughts are not our thoughts, and I don't say this out of arrogance, it's just truth, for whatever reason, God's people, us people of, of Israel, <laughs> you know, um, we were, we were chosen, you know, we were predestined to live the life that, that we are, God chose us for whatever his reasoning, you know, we're undeserving, but I'm grateful, because, <laughs> you know, Satan's an a-hole, and I don't want nothing to do with him, um, um and, and I'm right there with God, you know, it says in the Bible that God's perfect will is for every person, every man and woman to come to know the truth and to be saved. You know, a lot of people are like, oh, your God's mean and he killed a bunch of people in the Bible. And I'm like, man, you don't even know what you're talking about. The people that God ended up killing the tribes, they were the tribes of the Nephilim. They were, they were Satan's bloodline, like... God, everything that God does, he does it to protect his people and his creation. All right, next question. Is that Jean-Claude or Jean-Claude? An owl. Okay, churches are deserted and you don't know how to fill them up. Psychics don't need to be delivered. Okay, Jean-Claude, did you even watch the interview? Because that, it, it's just not making sense. Yes, a lot of churches are deserted, and you don't know how to fill them up. Actually, you know what? That's kind of a good point. You know why churches aren't filled up? Because the Christian body of Christ has not been doing its job. They've been playing religion for so long due to Satan's deceptions and man's ego and pride. You know that the Christian body of Christ has not been taught properly to do spiritual warfare and deliverance and operate in your spiritual gifts and perform miracles and actually do what Jesus said to do. So, without you know signs and wonders and miracles coming from us or, or prophesy or whatever your gift is, um, why would non-believers believe you? You know, when I before I was saved, I went to church often, you know, and I thought it was what it was. It was a bunch of hogwash because there was, there was nothing spectacular going on. And, and according to the Bible, Jesus was pretty spectacular. <laughs> and he said that you will do greater things than I, and we're not there yet, you know. So, it's a good point, Jean-Claude. We don't know how to fill them up. It's because we, we got to walk in truth, period. Psychics don't need to be delivered. I'm going to disagree with you because I know better. Yes, they do. I had three different demons in me and four, and a fourth one that oppressed me. But I actually had three demons inside of me, attached to my soul, controlling my life, almost killed me. Yes, psychics need deliverance. Without the Holy Spirit, you lack discernment. I did. And you end up channeling 
Anunnaki gods and crazy shit like that. <laughs> yes, you do need deliverance. And if you don't believe me, check this out. Ask Jesus. Ask God himself. Just ask God. Hum humble your heart and truly ask God if you, if you honestly want to know. And he'll, sh he'll show it to you. Singho, I'm sorry, I'm from Louisiana in the United States. I don't know how to pronounce your name, homie. Um, Sinjo Hasharima, I just butchered that. I apologize. You said, only stupid and cursed people who believe in the Trinity or handled the cross. Okay, you can't have the word stupid as your second word and then misspell like nine words in your paragraph and write sentence fragments. It just doesn't really drive your point home calling people like me stupid. <laughs> Only stupid and cursed people who believe in the Trinity are handled the cross. Do you not even wonder why the satanics or gothics I'm assuming also put the cross? Well it's because they like to put it with the almighty others to be worshipped with him so for sure you are going to hell no matter what of good things you do early in your life search on the net serrate Miriam you will know the truth about the prophet called Jesus and he was a man not God foolish okay first of all you need to learn how to spell and write correctly if you're gonna use the word stupid and foolish and direct that at me so um, check yourself seeing how um, <clears throat> you do kind of have you're on to something with the whole cross thing um, I feel you on that one because when I was studying New World Order stuff I kind of I started watching Walter Weiss Battle of the Bibles because I wanted to know how it was all formed you know and um, and coming from my Catholic background, I had a big problem with the cross. Like, sitting there staring at a picture of this shredded, bloody Jesus. It was just displayed. And I just always had a problem with that. And so, and also, you know, uh, the fertility goddess Tammuz. There's Nimrod, Tammuz, and Semiramis. Well, the cross was also a symbol, a pagan symbol for the goddess Tammuz. Um, so I asked God, I was like, well, I don't really want to, you know, I don't believe that the cross and that, that your son's death because it, Jesus's death wasn't final. He rose from the dead three days later. So why would a symbol of his permanent death be a Christian symbol? It was just contradictory. It didn't make sense to me. So I asked God. And I asked God for his symbol, and this is what he showed me. Hold on. I know I'm not Picasso, but I didn't even know that I could draw before this. <laughs> so God not only saves your soul, he opens up all kinds of cool artistic stuff that he gave me. But yes, um, point being is that God showed me that this was a symbol. And he personally told me, I can't prove this to you, but I can share it with you. He told me that the King James Version of the Bible is the one that I needed to be reading. Are there mistranslations in all the versions? Yes. But that's why God tells you in the book of Timothy to study, to show yourself approved to God. But yeah, the Bible is God's symbol. Um, and if a Christian ever tells you not to read the Word of God, or that, that the Bible is not the Word of God, or that, um, I've even seen Christians on YouTube preaching that the Bible is the mark of the beast, and uh, it just makes me want to face palm. I'm just, I'm, I'm thankful that I asked God myself, because it just, it, it getting it straight from God, it eliminates all this other confusion that other people, even Christians, will bring on you, you know. Be on the, on the cross thing. Um, they do like to make some and try to get worshipped with our God. Uh, but, you know, they do that in a lot of ways. Christmas, Easter, you know, 
symbols like the cross. Um, there's a lot of paganism mixed in with Christianity, but that's what that's what the Bible's talking about, or Jesus is talking about the Bible when he says that he hates the deeds of the Nicolaitans. The deeds of the Nicolaitans, in summary, are the mixture between paganism and Christianity. Jesus hates it because it's created this lukewarm Laodicean church that we're in right now, you know, where there's no conviction from the Holy Spirit. You know, and then there's no conviction from the Holy Spirit. So you got all these Christians beating each other over the head with scriptures trying to judge and correct each other. And Christians, it's not your job to convict. It's the Holy Spirit's. Just saying. Okay. Anything else? Sing ho. Almighty to be worshipped with him, so for sure you're going to hell no matter what of good things you do early in your life. Brother, I'm going to have to ask you to, to be, you need to clarify exactly what you're trying to say. I mean, I understand you don't speak English well or whatever, and that's cool. But you can't tell people they're going to hell and then have that mixed up in a confusing sentence because that's just ineffective. Moving along. Ter Puris, I don't believe you knew the Catholic Church and her teachings at all. <clears throat> Catholics do not perform rituals as pagans do. We do not worship saints or Mary. Yes, you do. <laughs> I grew up in a Catholic church and I did witchcraft. And when you light a candle and you say a prayer to anyone other than Jesus, you're invoking spirits from the demonic realm, whether you know it or not. And you can read in your Bible. First of all, I want to clarify, I'm not against Catholics or any person of any religion for that matter. Like... That's, that's not where I'm coming from at all. Um, where I'm coming from is that through my experience, I've learned that, that Catholicism is not, um, it, it doesn't agree with the word of God. And I didn't write the word of God. You know, I'm not judging like a person. I'm judging the, the error. You know, God says to righteously judge. And so, so be it. So... Okay, the differences in the Catholic Church's doctrine and, and the Bible is, in Catholic Church, we used to call the priest father. Well, the Word of God says, call no man father, but your father in heaven. The Catholic Church, we confessed our sins to a priest. The Word of God says, Jesus is the only one faithful and just to forgive sins. Um, Catholic Church, you give prayers to dead saints. Why will you light candles at that? <laughs> God calls this an abomination in his word. Um, Catholicism, they have a co-mediator. They have made Mary a co-mediator. And Jesus, the word of God says, Jesus is the only mediator between man and God. Period. We can't go changing that. Um, you know, sending prayers to Mary. Only pray to the Father in Jesus' name. That's it. God, God made... His word and, and the gospel of Christ simple so that, you know, because God's not mixed among all this confusion and all this adding stuff and taking away and all this other nonsense. Idol worship. This breaks the second commandment. And we're saying that, you know, Catholics are telling me, well, we don't worship idols. And um, you personally may not, but your hierarchy in your church does, and many other congregation members, <laughs> they very much do put up idols in the church. Um, the truth about Catholicism is it is actually based off of uh, mystery Babylonian religions. Worship of the, the um, of Nimrod, Tammuz, and Semiramis. Um, they... They're literally worshiping these gods. They know that they're worshiping the sun god. The, the Pope and 
the um, people in the Vatican. They know what they're doing. Um, people in the congregation probably have no idea. I mean, I grew up going to a Catholic church, and I mean, of course they didn't tell us that stuff. Um, if you're asking his name and not Mother Mary, because she can't answer your prayers. She can't even hear you. Um, I'll leave some of these links below the video if you want to watch them. There's like a testimony of a former... Um, He's an ex-Roman Catholic priest. He was he was a priest for 22 years, and he left because he says that Roman Catholicism opposes absolute biblical truth. So there you have it. You have the Word of God <laughs> that I that I just showed you, and then here's a an ex-priest of 22 years who left because you know their doctrines are vastly different. <laughs> um, there's some other. You know, testimonies and stuff. I think everybody is aware of the whole sexual scandals and the, you know, the hierarchies of Catholicism and the child pedophile rings. Um, go research what's underneath the Vatican. It'll, you know, if you really want to get into the truth. The Word of God <laughs> that I that I just showed you, and then here's a an ex priest of 22 years who left because. You know, their doctrines are vastly different. <laughs> um, there's some other, you know, testimonies and stuff. I think everybody is aware of the whole sexual scandals and the, you know, the hierarchies of Catholicism and the child pedophile rings. Um, go research what's underneath the Vatican, It'll, you know, if you really want to get into the truth. Um, so I wrote a book, it's on Amazon, it's called Christianity Decoded, and I wrote an entire chapter about Catholicism. Let's see if... Chapter 5. Okay, there are many deceptions in various so-called Christian religions, but Roman Catholicism takes the cake. This is not formed for my opinions, but historical facts and biblical truth. The Dark Ages are now painted as an era of chivalry, peace, and stability. Both Catholic and non-Catholic historians of earlier centuries have recorded the slaughter of millions for the crime of opposition against the quote-unquote Mother Church. So, we need to be attentive of the fact that the Dark Ages have been whitewashed. Catholic histor historians have been granted permission by their church to falsify history in order to hide the horrible guilt of their church. The corruption of the mother of all har harlots, the Roman Catholic papacy, continues to this day. The Roman Catholic Church is Satan's ultimate counterfeit version of Christianity. To a degree, Roman Catholicism receives its power from paganism. By adopting and accepting pagan practices into the church, Catholicism gained in power and popularity, extending her reach literally around the globe. Revelation 17 is a prophecy that contains the truth about the papacy. It would take writing another book for me to fully explain biblical prophecies, along with thorough historical evidence concerning the things that I've shown you so far. So please take the content of, the, of this book for what it is, which is a step in the right direction for those who are truly seeking after Christ. Ask him, the Holy Spirit, to give you a revelation on Revelations 9, 17, and 18. You can start there in reference to Catholic Church. Mr. God Kid, I don't know enough about what it's like to go through practicing magic to really calm it. But I played with magic in video games and I got a conscience about it and it really, really vexed me for ages. Yes. Um, uh, there's actually like high level satanic cults that put curses on certain movies, music, video games in order to demonically inflict. Um, Whoever's consuming their media products. Don't believe me though. Go research it yourself. But I mean this guy's testifying to it. Man when I was. I was like 10 years old. 
and I watched The Exorcist, the movie, I had nightmares for eight years. It was torture. I suffered from manic depression, like ended up drinking a lot when I got older. I had to go get therapy and get hypnotized to get that image of Linda Blair out of my head. And then come to find out, I watched a, a Bill Snowblin um, lecture, and he was a high-level occultist, and he he testified to uh, to that that particular movie, you know, having a demonic curse on it. I know it did. I mean, who has nightmares for eight years in a row? All right, Mr. Godkid, thank you for your compliment and comment. I appreciate that. Um, Zoom 6 says, I've never heard it better put. I think being involved in the occult than repenting gives you more insight on the reality of the situation. It does because you learn the enemy first. And when you know your enemy, you know, you're better equipped to, to fight the war with them, you know. So, yeah. Wendy Peterson says, hold the blinking phone here. I was a Catholic for decades. While I still love the religion and still am Catholic, I also have investigated the Pentecostal faith and love it. And currently attend the Wesleyan Methodist faith. So I know a bit about the beliefs of different denominations. There's nothing wrong in reverencing the mother of Jesus. She has appeared to people all around the world, urging them to pray to Jesus and repeating his teachings and urging people to read the Bible. She was instrumental behind the creation of Lords where the healing waters reduce suffering and increase faith in Jesus and Christian beliefs. This world is a battleground between the forces of good and evil, and if there is a friend and ally offering help and truth, then there's nothing wrong in accepting that help. Our Lady Mary is not a pagan goddess. She is the mother of Jesus, who is with him at every turn. She is the woman who is described by the angel Gabriel as blessed among women. If this Catholic bashing keeps up, the Christian faith will end up divided and hateful like those of the Islamic faith who are killing each other over the Middle East. I think the Catholic faith could call more upon the presence of the Holy Spirit, but few Christian denominations go through baptism of the Holy Spirit and speak in tongues. <clears throat> I want you to come out of that. You know, God wants you out of it. He says, come out of Babylon. And you, and people in, in the Catholic faith don't realize that, that the hierarchy and the history of that church proves that that church, the Roman Catholic papacy, is the mother of all harlots that Revelation 17 is talking about. Just just ask the Holy Spirit for guidance. And, and I encourage people, if you're a Christian, get in the word. Get in there. I don't care what denomination you are. I don't care what church you go to. Get in the word because it's going to tell you. God will tell you the truth. You know. Um, I mean, I've been to Catholic churches, Baptist churches, Pentecostal churches. I actually kind of like Pentecostal churches. But, you know, I've seen a counterfeit Holy Spirit in every denomination. And I've seen a Holy in the actual Holy Spirit come down in all of them. Actually, I take that back because the Baptist churches I've been to, they were kind of lacking the Holy Spirit in there. Because um, you're right, the baptism of the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues and the gifts and prophesying and the actual order, God's order of the church, you know, a lot of denominations don't honor that. So when we don't go by, you know, God's order, it leaves room for Satan to come in and do his work, however. The Knights we in the lectures discussed two that the Knights Templars aspects had of their religion. Two the one was for the of Goyim, their religion. For the one the was for the Goyim. And that, according to morals and dogma and all the, the testimonies to relating to this issue, was Catholicism. So the outside world got Catholicism. The inner esoteric circle had Luciferism. That was what happened in Catholicism. Do you think it might be possible 
that exactly the same thing could be happening in the Islamic faith, that there is an inner circle and an outer circle, that the inner circle has one faith and the outer circle gets Guayam religion. Exactly. Exactly my point. <clears throat> I'm not against Catholics. I'm not against any believer in Jesus Christ. <clears throat> But the truth is, is that these elite, like the Pope, the Roman Catholic Papacy, the, the UN, um, all of that, the, the secret societies, um, they tell the public one thing, and then there's the truth of what's going on. And it's the same thing with with Catholicism. All the <clears throat> and the, you can find the absolute truth, God's truth about it, in here. But you got to get rid of your pride and all that stuff that's you know that'll that'll block you from hearing and, and the Holy Spirit and being able to get revelation from it. <clears throat> I'm telling you because you need to be delivered from that. Um, there's a lot of demonic bondage and oppression that comes out of Catholicism, just like witchcraft. Um, just, I just beg you, I encourage you, just ask God Himself, the Holy Spirit. Don't ask Mother Mary. You know, when I when I was <clears throat> in the occult and I was praying to God, God is Spirit, Source, Masters, Teachers, and Loved Ones. I believed at the time that that was the highest truth that there was. I was convinced for 12 years. You know, I didn't know that I was deceived, just like a lot of people in Catholicism. They don't know that they're deceived. But what opened my eyes was this, reading it for myself and asking God for guidance. It's simple. The truth is simple. You'll find it in here and God will show it to you. But you got to humble yourself and ask, you know. There's no sense in the body of Christ as arguing over man-made religions. God's not a religion. He's God, you know, and, and he will answer your, your questions and your prayers. Are you French? Because I'm from Quebec. I'm curious about you. Thank you for your free truth sharing. Continue your hard job. Wish you would like it. I'm pretty sure. Yes, I'm French. <laughs> I'm Cajun <clears throat> on my on my dad's side and on my mom's side. They're hillbillies, the Grants. The Lord will greatly use you, sister, to be in his end time army. That's what I'm talking about. The wounded warriors, baby. That is all the comments I think from that one. It's time for a change. Y'all ready? world become evil and when did it become cool to shit on your people low lives backstabbers dope fiends all around me I'm trying to find my way out but this world's trying to drown me there's so much hate and anger once you thought we're really close get distance and then they become strangers i mean it's kind of simple when you think about it i kind of knew that it was coming because in the bible i read about it but i ain't think that it would happen this soon but then again who would have thought the masses was being lied to you see i'm trying to truth